I am the director of the 3D Security Initiative, which is co-sponsoring this event today. I'm also the, a professor of peace building at Eastern Mennonite University. And like those of you probably in the room who are part of the field of peace building, what draws me to be part of this conversation is that the work on the ground is complex. There are so many stakeholders and actors, and there is a real need for smarter tools and better communication technology and, and ways of facilitating different groups who don't have physical contact with each other to communicate with each other. This came home to me when I was in Iraq in 2005 working with Iraqi NGOs who really had no way of interfacing with the U.S. government and the military. And so they passed on this message that they would like a better infrastructure for communication between civil society organizations working for change and doing peace building and those in governments in the international community doing this. And at the time, there were very rough meetings um, that were not adequate for all the communication that needed to happen. And so the mission of the 3D Security Initiative now is to build better bridges and infrastructure for civil society and a whole of government approach to thinking about how to change a situation. So we're honored to co-sponsor this with Lockheed Martin and U.S. Institute of Peace. Our first afternoon speaker is Scott Setcher, Sexer, who is uh, formerly from the White House, where he was government accounts manager for five years, and now he is the government Ac operations manager at uh, Linden Lab, which is the developer of the renowned Second Life. Uh, for those people who want more than a first life, you can live a second life online. It looks somewhat similar to the Lockheed platform that we saw earlier today, uh, which is a closed environment, and this is a user-generated open environment. Um, so really, any community can develop their own role play on Second Life. And uh, Scott will tell us more about the applications and the relevance that they have for peace building. Welcome, Scott. Thank you. Yes, I was the uh, operations manager previously at the White House. Now I'm the government accounts manager for Second Life. Uh, our parent company is known as uh, Linden Lab. And uh, I joined, prior to, uh, prior to joining Linden Lab, I had worked in the government for about eight years. And uh, I, uh, someone brought the, uh, the idea of joining Linden Lab up to me, and I really had not experienced uh, spent any time in Linden Life, or in Second Life, and uh, spent, spent a little time in, in World, they call it In World, got to know it a little bit, went in for an interview, uh, met uh, my uh, now boss in Second Life, and walked out of that interview. <laughs> I mean, you know, spending eight years in, in government, you, you are in uh, video conference meetings, you're in uh, Teleconference meetings, you don't even know who you're talking to. Um, and after, after having that one meeting, that one interview, I was like, this is the best thing ever. This is awesome. I have to be part of it. So now here I am talking to you all. Uh, I'd like to show you a couple things that I've done since joining uh, Linden Lab. I do have a few uh, friends walking around. I don't know if you can see it. One of the things that I've done since joining, there's my avatar right there. I'll, I'll see. <laughs> You can see him, he's kind of hanging out. He's a hip guy, and uh, <laughs> he can fly. There he is. I'll give you a better view. What, where we are right now is called Coalition Island. Anyone can visit this island. I'm flying up in the air. I'll give you a, a view from the sky. Uh, anyone uh, can visit this island, as I said. I created this island because, because uh, there were some military organizations in Second Life, and they were spread about. Um, I wanted to put them all together in one place and allow all the public who are visiting Second Life to also be able to, to come to this one location and see what the military is doing in Second Life. So here we are. This is a, a monument much like the, you would see in, um, you know, in Washington, D.C. Uh, there's a tribute to the Marines. Uh, I'll fly over here. Uh, I'm flying because of, you know, for, for time purposes. Uh, I'll give you a better view. Here is the, I believe this is the Navy's, uh, let's see, 
Now that's, the, that's still the Marines. Here's the Navy's uh, wall. And this is, just to, this is just so people can come in, see what, like I said, see what uh, the military is doing. Um, what I'll then do is show you what, uh, uh, talk a little bit about each of the military groups and what they're doing. You'll see that my avatar stops a little bit strangely. It's, it, it, uh, it can be because of the connection speed. So uh, if I run into walls or anything, it could, uh, I'll blame it on the connection speed. So here's an overview of, uh, of where we are currently. And it'll show up slowly. But uh, Second Life has about 30,000 islands. Each island is about 16 acres uh, in the real life, would equal about 16 acres in the real life. Uh, there's Coalition Island right there in the middle with the, uh, you see the Pentagon shape. And uh, so then you look out and you'll see around Coalition Island, you see some other islands forming up. Uh, and same goes here. If, the, if we had a little bit faster connection speed, that would all res in a lot quicker. Um, and what I'll do is I'll start talking about what each, each of those islands do. And right now we have the Navy. This is the Navy. This is, uh, it's NUIC. It's the Naval Undersea Warfare Center. They're doing some great things in Second Life. They are uh, doing some prototyping, some testing, some training. Uh, they uh, have built what you see here. And uh, you can learn a little bit about what they're doing, what they're doing in Second Life. You can see what they're doing by visiting their island. If I was to go uh, past where we are right now, you would see what they're doing in Second Life. Now I'll travel down the road this way. And this is where the Air Force is, and you should be able to see the airplanes. You can see the unmanned aerial vehicle right here. Uh, the Air Force has built this to, and you can see right there I'm being offered an uh, item from the Air Force, and I can keep it or discard it. I think I'll discard it because I probably already have one. Uh, but you can learn more about what they're doing. You can see right here is their map and what each of their islands is, uh, is doing. Uh, they have a lot of train. They're trying to uh, do teaching uh, and training, and they have a simulation area on their uh, their islands. They they will be expanding here shortly. I believe they have five islands right now. Uh, there I am overshooting. Um, I believe they have five islands right now. They should uh, be doubling their size here shortly. They uh, they also have a great airplane collection. So if you're interested in, in airplanes, go visit this place. It's awesome. So. Uh, now I'll travel over to where the Army is. And I would show you the Marines, but they're, they're not in there yet. So if you know any Marines, tell them they're, they're missing the boat. So here we have, not really. Uh, here we have the Army. And just past, uh, past this area, you can see um, well, it's still resing in. You, that's where the Army islands are. They're doing a lot of education, training. Uh, there's, a, there's two army groups actually. The second, uh, the second uh, group is doing some family, uh, uh, family counseling, uh, some really interesting stuff. Uh, and from what I understand, we have a video plane. So we can come over here, we can see the video. There's my partner in crime. His name is John. And John's name in Second Life is Pathfinder. And it doesn't look like the video is playing for me right now, probably because of my connection speed. But what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll I, the second part of my discussion, I want to take you to an island that I, um, that we use occasionally. And I put some things in there that I thought might, uh, might interest the group. Um, it looks like the, the video is starting to show up. Unfortunately, we don't have, uh, we don't have sound. Here's a video that was created by, by the Naval Undersea Warfare Center. And it talks about, a uh, little bit about what they're doing inside Second Life. And this is one of the heads of the, their efforts over there. His name is Steve. Uh, St Steve created this video uh, to let uh, the public and uh, um, let others know what he's doing in Second Life. Uh, one of the interesting things, uh, and you can see it right here, one of the interesting things after creating this island is, and grouping all these different military branches together, it created this group that you're seeing right now, and we're all meeting together. So you have the Navy, the Army, and uh, the Air Force meeting at one table, talking about collaboration, how to work together, how to 
benefit from Second Life, how to um, maximize its potential. So that's one of the great things that uh, that came from this uh, from this venture. What I'll do now is uh, teleport. That's another interesting thing my my uh, my avatar can do, and I'll let our friend Pathfinder know that we're moving on. Let's see. I'll, I'll let him hear us. He, hey, Pathfinder, we're moving on to uh, to fair now. You want to come with us? We can't hear you, so you're gonna have to type in. talk uh, after uh, do you remember show and tell when, as a kid show and tell you would bring things and okay we all do so what I like to do uh, since I've come from the government and I have this government background I've seen lots of interesting things in Second Life uh, I can't show you all of them with, don't have enough time but what I've tried to do is put together a number of things so that you can get a good feeling and of what I've seen and and what I've been part of since I've been uh, in Second Life and right now we're uh, uh, we're just waiting to uh, move over to the next island. Hopefully, we'll get there. How many people are in Second Life now? How many kind of are you going to be encountering? There's a. Uh, we do daily. That's usually how we keep track. And there's usually, uh, there's usually roughly, uh, we'll try that again, uh, between 60 to 90,000 a day. Yeah, at any given time. No, at any given time. You know, I don't, I don't have that number. Um, But it's it's interesting because uh, one of the items that I w that I was going to show you is a uh, an event that I attended yesterday, which was uh, um, which was the launch of the space shuttle. Uh, I was just happened to be in World, and uh, someone sent me someone uh, affiliated with one of the NASA groups sent me an instant message saying, "Hey, come watch the uh, the shuttle launch." So I, I go over to this new area. I teleported, unlike, uh, not like what I'm doing now, but what I'm trying to do. I teleported to this other area and uh, uh, watched, this, watched the space shuttle launch. When I look back, there's about 40 people there. So within the matter of five minutes, 40 people showed up to watch a space shuttle launch. The interesting part about that is, uh, is that within this launch of the space shuttle were people who actually worked for NASA. There was a group of folks who, uh, who were talking, uh, knew way more about NASA than I could ever know. So I could go up to them and ask them questions. I, it ended up afterwards, uh, one of the uh, folks from NASA had created a, has, uh, she's a volunteer, she had created a library, a, a NASA library. And she created this library, uh, brought me to the library, started showing me what she was doing and uh, started telling me about things that they had going on in Second Life. So I was learning about NASA. I had no, I, just, I thought I was gonna go watch a space shuttle launch, which I did. Uh, then I started learning about NASA. She ended up giving me uh, this book. I never, this is another thing. I'd never seen a book in Second Life until yesterday, uh, which leads you to, you know, wonder what possibilities are out there. Uh, I'll try one last time to see if we can teleport. Maybe uh, if we all cross our fingers that we can do it. So how do you describe it in Second Life? I know you told me you were free. Okay. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, Second Life is free. So all of you can go home, at, get on your computer. It's, uh, you just log on to secondlife.com. You can create your own avatar. You can have a cool avatar like, like mine. And, uh, <laughs> You can start walking around different places and, and check out different things and uh, you know meet different people, uh, talk to the folks at NASA. NASA has a great setup where they have uh, uh, they have uh, they have a, a great uh, shuttle collection. And uh, let's see, I think I can do it now. If 
but anyone can join and it's free. And that's one of the great things. You can, anyone can go on, you can log on from California or San Diego or uh, Boston, like uh, John here is in Boston, um, and you can start meeting with um, someone who's in another state for free. Uh, Second Life does, uh, I believe, a billion minutes in, uh, in voice phone calls uh, per month. So uh, you can consider it a free phone call if, if that's all you want to use it for. If you want to use it for more, you can. Um, here, I'll briefly go through this since we, uh, we missed. I'll, I'll, I'll take you to the, uh, since I was talking about the uh, NASA area, I'll, t uh, I'll take you there first. Now, I put up all this stuff, and I've created obstacles for myself. But what we have here is, and it's, it's coming in slowly, is a, uh, will be a photo of, of the NASA area. What I'll show you first, since that's coming in still, is a, uh, what you see is a uh, conference table, like you might see at any um, you know, executive's office. And the cool thing about it is if you look at this conference table, this, is, this could be a, considered a meeting space in Second Life. In fact, I've had some of the greatest meetings within Second Life at places like what we see over here, this campfire. There's a <laughs> Seriously, I've had some of the best meetings sitting at you know, a, a, a campfire. And uh, the, here's, here's uh, Pat Thorne. He's going to join us. He's going to sit down. And uh, you, wonder, you, you wonder, is it the office that, you know, do you, does the office get your creative juices flowing? I don't, I don't know. But when you are in this environment, I mean, it helps me. I don't know. Uh, but uh, so here, I will show you a few other things. Um, here is the picture that I took uh, yesterday at the NASA event. And there it is. And if you can see, if you look, if you look in the left-hand part of the screen, if you look in the left-hand part of the screen, you can see the shuttle actually launching. That's after it's, it's, it's up in space now. And if you look in the right-hand, lower right-hand, you see all the avatars. I tried, to, I tried to get it all into one shot. It was tough. I'm not the best photographer. But uh, so there's, you know, 40, you know, almost 40 avatars there. Here's the book that I was given. You just touch that, you can open up. It's an actual book. You can read it. There's pages. Uh, she had a number of books that she uh, had in her library. Uh, here's the space suit that they gave me. Uh, took a picture of myself in there. I could put it on right now. It would take like two seconds, but I don't want to have a, a wardrobe malfunction, so I'll skip that. Uh, then we'll move over to this area. And I'm speeding up now because this is an interesting thing. And, and if John could talk, uh, if we could hear what John was saying, uh, Helen Keller Day took place about two weeks ago. And what, that, uh, what that's, what's been done is someone has created a dog that will allow blind uh, folks to, uh, and John, if you could mention anything that I'm, yeah, a guide dog that will show, that will allow blind people to use Second Life. So this guide dog will help people get around Second Life. And there, John's put it in the, in the text right now. It's, uh, it's virtualguidedog.org. I'm going to move over to here to, uh, if any of you have, have any um, uh, interest in World War II, like myself, uh, here is a battleship that uh, a man in Japan created. Uh, this is the largest, I believe the largest battleship uh, during the war, and there's actual, it's actually li life size. It's incredible. It's, um, it's fully detailed. You can go inside the gun. There's every little detail inside the gun, uh, the deck guns. It's incredible. I talked to the, the maker of it. He's Japanese. He couldn't understand a word I was saying, but uh, through uh, Second Life, you, there's a uh, language translator that you can use that when I type in something, he'll read it in Japanese, and when he types in something, I'll read it in English. Uh, here is a, uh, here's another event. Um, this was interesting. I, I, I thought, well, Second Life's got to be great for a simulation. Um, and so I was, I was thinking, well, you know, firefighters could really use this. So I went around and looked and found a, a, a location that uh, these firefighters were, um, I, some of them were real firefighters, some of them were just role playing. Um, and what they were doing, and you can't see them, there's firefighters in the building. They actually have wa working water pressure. They had police who had cordoned off the street. There were spectators there watching. And these are all avatars 
who on their own decide to come to this location and watch this take place. And there was roughly 20 people there. Uh, like I said, the firefighters had you know, the water pressure that they had to maintain to put the fire out. The fire slowly went out as they, as they uh, sprayed it down. It was really interesting. And then we'll come over this way. Here is a, um, here's a border crossing. I wanted to show this. And that's a picture of me in the police car. Uh, I'm not a policeman, but uh, the uh, border, I'm showing this because there's a case study that re we recently did on Loyalist College in uh, Canada. And this uh, Loyalist College uses a border crossing. They use uh, Second Life for training uh, their border crossing guards. Uh, they they de determined that uh, within one year, they went from 56% per, uh, passing to 95% passing using Second Life. So, and then I wanted to come over here and, and with building, building any uh, so, uh, society, one of the most important things we all know is having a, ju a judicial system. One of the things I want to show you is how easy it is to build things in Second Life. So I went and found a courthouse and um, amazingly, um, the courthouse is in this little box right here. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll just touch it and it wants me to res it. So I'll say, sure, let's res it. And there's the courthouse. Uh, it cost me uh, a couple dollars. So, I mean, you could come in, uh, you know, get a, you know, spend a few dollars and, you know, you have a courthouse. You, now you can have, you can train judges, you can tra train lawyers, um, you know, you, you can train uh, someone in another country who knows nothing about the judi judicial system. Yeah, Pathfinder's calling me to the stand. So <laughs> let's get out of there. So we'll move on. Here's a, here's a real cool uh, uh, radio antenna that I, I just wanted to put in there. So, um, uh, yeah. No, uh, this is, this is uh, and I'll ignore this, but one of the, one of the I want to say one of the most interesting and most detailed pieces of equipment that I've seen in Second Life is this Apache helicopter. I, I wanted to find an Apache helicopter, so I said, you know, where, where can I find one? I spent a little time searching, found one. It's very detailed. You could, uh, you could give it to your cadets who are trained how to learn learning how to fly helicopters, and I would want to say it might get them, you know, halfway there. But if you, you know, you could just give them a laptop, give them Second Life, and, you know, getting halfway there, how much money does that save? I don't know. Uh, talking about peace and, and, and uh, stability uh, you know I know I know mines are, are a um, serious thing in uh, uh, in countries that are at war and and if you could train individuals how to spot mines um, how to disable mines uh, how to uh, you know be wary of IEDs that sort of thing um, and there's a picture of me with my blast suit on uh, my bomb disposal suit on in the background. I don't know if you can see it. These mines will actually explode. So here I am, I, you know, I'm looking at a, a computer, uh, but I could train in, you know, 100% safety, not ever have to be uh, close to one of these mines and be in danger at all. There, Pathfinder stepped on one. Uh, but he's still with us, so don't worry. So we'll move on. We'll move on to, uh, yeah, he's okay. Move on here. Here, this big statue is the guide dog. Uh, they had a, a, the event was here, actually. Um, I did some work uh, through NDU. I met one of the folks who works for the FBI, and uh, um, they created a billboard of the 10 most wanted individuals, uh, uh, their, uh, their 10 most wanted uh, fugitives, uh, and they loaned a copy of it to me. And I just thought it was interesting um, because they, put this up and it, it got so much publicity uh, within, uh, you know, bloggers were talking about it and that sort of thing. But it's interesting how just putting one thing up in Second Life uh, and using this world got them more attention to their cause and what they're trying to accomplish. I, th I thought it was great. And they are, you know, when they uh, are able to get this out more to more uh, areas, it'll reach, you know, uh, users with little, little cost to them. Um, I'll move on to a couple last items. 
Uh, this is a cool car. This guy, uh, one of the interesting things about Second Life is there are people that I want to call artists or they build great things and they just, you can see that they put a lot of passion into what they've built. Linden Lab, Second Life, we don't, we don't really create anything except the platform that allows you to build things like this car in front of us. We, uh, we do not build you know, a World of Warcraft, but you can come into Second Life and build your own type of World of Warcraft. Uh, we do not create simulations. You can go in and create your own simulation. And you can use the tools that others have built. S uh, someone else had built the Apache helicopter. Someone else had bu built those landmines. You can go in and take those items and use them um, to, uh, to whatever, uh, whatever you need to do. One of the last things I want to show you, uh, some of the people I've been working with have uh, they've started to use Second Life to, uh, for prototyping um, and testing which is really interesting because uh, if you think of, uh, say, uh, renewable energies and testing of renewable energies and how effective designs are and prototyping of, of new designs, the cost can be, you know, the, can put you out of the game from the start. Uh, here we could see, I could see, uh, you know, where these, where these, uh, these uh, could be used to test their efficiency, to, to, the, to test which design is best. Um, and then uh, you know, bring bring them into the real world once the testing in the uh, in the virtual world has been done. And now Pathfinder is creating something for us. Looks like a boat. And I'll leave you with uh, one of the interesting things. You know, and I try to point this out to my kids is, you know, hey, take a look at the sunset whenever you can, or look at the sky whenever you can, because there's really cool things out there. And in Second Life, same thing. It's, it's, you know, there's some really neat things to see, including, you know, the sunset. Thanks. All right, thank you so much, Josh. An introduction to Second Life. Who has some questions about how this works and the applications for it in the back? <laughs> how I work? Can you elaborate a little more on your role sure, and how I you interface with government and help us get started in these things? I uh, work with uh, government agency, government groups, whether they're state or, or federal. Uh, I try to help them. Uh, you know, some may be fully uh, involved in Second Life. Uh, some may be, uh, you know, taking their first steps. And what I, I encourage people to do is don't take my word for it. You go do it yourself and see what you can do in Second Life. See, you know, what you can accomplish. How can it help your group? How can it help, uh, how can it help you move your cause forward? You test that. Don't take my word for it. And then when you need more advice from me, come back to me and I'll help you as much as I can. So that's what I do. All right, another question in the back of the room. Yes. Thank you for the presentation. Actually, two questions. Yeah. <coughs> First one, rather on a, uh, a light note. Well, aren't you planning to, since the guy built a Yamato, aren't you buying, uh, building a USS Yorktown? And the, <laughs> the second one is that, um, I'm an activist, and actually one of the interesting things to me coming here to uh, the presentation is to figure out how we can transpose real-life campaigns to Second Life. Uh, an example is right now in my organization, the American Islamic Congress, we're running a boycott campaign against Nokia for providing surveillance systems to the Iranian government. And we've, uh, we're uh, above 9,000 signatures in less than 12 days with minimum effort. and. We're like uh, Second Life looks like a very interesting part to uh, project the campaign to get more awareness and more support for the cause. Thank you. Could you just identify your name too? Uh, my name is Nasser Wadadi. I'm Civil Rights Outreach Director with the American Islamic Congress. Thank you. Uh, great question. Uh, about building the Yorktown, um, someone else's. I challenge you guys to do that. Um, I'm not a builder in Second Life. I wish I was. Uh, but as far as organizing, uh, you know, I've been on campaigns myself, and I know that uh, part of being on a campaign, if it were a, a, a widespread campaign, is uh, one of the um, 
one of the problems can be the distance and having people spread out. What I think, uh, what, I, what I know can help is, is bringing all those individuals together. Uh, and I can look at, there's Betsy. Betsy, she's in California. She's at our headquarters right now. And if, Betsy, can you say something? I won't be able to hear her. You can't hear her right now. But I'll know when she's talking to me. And I'll be able to hear her. If I, if I were in a meeting with her, I'd be able to hear her. John, wherever John went, uh, he's in Boston. So you can bring these groups together, have them all voice their opinions, what's going on in Boston, what's going on in, in Los Angeles, at minimal cost. So that's how I see it. Okay. Hand right here. Lynn Wellsman, do you, one of the problems DOD has had with Second Life is the number of ports you have to open to, to use it. Is this something you're working on in terms of making it more kind of security friendly? Yeah, actually, uh, security uh, has been a important issue for us recently. We uh, just created a behind the firewall server that allows for uh, 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 that allows for users to place the server actually behind their firewall. So it could go behind the DoD's firewall, sit in there. They could protect the uh, the environment that they use, closed off to everyone else. So uh, that's how. You couldn't get original with all the other players. You would not, but you can. You can go out. Uh, it, it's not as uh, it's not as <coughs> open as this is, but you do have the ability to collaborate with how you know. Uh, say everyone in the DoD is behind this protected you know server, so you could bring all those people into this one environment, and share the same, uh, some of the same, like the, the Apache right there. Uh, but yeah, we that's that's been one of our uh, recent developments is the protected server. All right, thank you. Let's move on to the online questions and conversations. What are you hearing, Joel? Thank you. Um, yeah, lots of interesting conversation. Uh, one logistical note I'll pass on from the online community is that if all the speakers could speak more directly or loudly into the mic, then some of the folks with low audio would be happy to just efficiently take care of that. Um, if anybody, by the way, is you know on Second Life and you feel like connecting to someone from USIP, uh, my avatar is Whitaker tomorrow. <laughs> I saw the name and I had to grab it. Um, and a lot of the conversation online has been sharing uh, the useful or interesting and relevant Second Life locations that uh, various of our online viewers have actually experienced or participated in. So I'll mention a couple. Uh, Second Life has proven to be a very good source and resource for third world simulations and nonprofit organizations to build awareness. There's a nonprofit island with lots of tutorials for nonprofits to figure out how to do the basics, create your own space, run events, really the basics of engaging people online. SL also has a very good health community, hospitals, emergency simulations, prevention, et cetera, lots of classes and lectures. And then Fatima, the, uh, the avatar who's also somehow on Twitter, uh, mentioned that for interesting sims on conflict, there's a good Darfur build in Second Life that is multimedia and has a place for discussion. And if you actually go onto Second Life and search, it's called Camp Darfur. It's essentially a replication of a Darfur uh, refugee camp with a lot of multimedia information and ways to get involved. Question for you. Uh, really relating to how to tap into real-time uh, data and simulations. Uh, the NASA area, someone was poking around on the NASA area after you left, the NASA area also has a model of the Earth with all the communication satellites and the space station circling it. And they're linked by data to actual locations. So when you see the space objects, they're in the actual locations they are at the time you're looking at them. Uh, pretty cool. How uh, are there other ways that you're looking at in Second Life of connecting real locations to the online world? That's a good question. Um, you know, one of the things about, uh, about Second Life is that the users can do what uh, he just described, uh, linking the satellites and using Google Maps and that sort of thing. Uh, NOAA has a great location uh, where they do just that and they show the satellites. Uh, there's a group called uh, Dayton that uh, you can go in and, and look at um, it's the uh, it's the FAA uh, information. It's the um, uh, it shows the planes flying into um, uh, virtual planes flying into uh, into LAX, um, and it's about five minutes behind, so there's no security. But 
but someone has built this and someone has taken information that's out there uh, and added this to Second Life and put it in a, in a way that's very visual. Uh, I learn by visually, I, I learn by doing, um, and some people learn by reading. Um, but I'm more of a visual person, and uh, um, I think what people are using Second Life for is, is a great thing. One of the things um, is management of all, you know, we have all this information everywhere, and being able to, you can use Second Life to manage this information, put it into one place, and not have this overload that some people are, you know, starting to feel. So. Thank you so much, Scott. This is an incredible program, fascinating, and I think has many applications for the field of peace building. So thanks for helping to make those links as well, Joel.